Hi, I'm Steve with RB Squared. Today I'm going to show you an incredibly useful tool that I'm actually sorry that I didn't pick up a long, long time ago. And I'm going to show you how to make a little hack that is going to make the tool all that better. So stick around and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take a guess that most of you already own a multimeter of some sort. I know I have. There are many out there. You can buy a very nice one like Fluke. And they're just an invaluable tool to have around the shop or on the road. But recently I started thinking about our RV and the current loads that I actually want to test. And it dawned on me that the best tool for the job is actually not a multimeter, but a clamp meter. And I'm talking about one of these babies right here. And yeah, you can go out and buy a fluke, no problem at all. And by all means, if you'd like to, that's great. But I'm going to tell you right now, this was bought from Lowe's and I spent um, less than $90 for it. So it was on the upper end of the cheaper scale. It wasn't an Amazon special. But one of the things that turned me on most about this one is a little feature on the bottom. It's, I think they called this the Insight model. And if you scoff at that, I will tell you right now, don't. Because especially for some reason in an RV, you are into all sorts of tight places where you're clamping something and you don't necessarily have the ability to read that and if you're like I am and you wear glasses it makes it all that much harder that when this display is tilted straight up it makes it really hard to read it but not when you have this bottom display a multimeter naturally comes with leads and those leads are obviously plugged into your your positive and common uh, terminal ports and then you can measure voltages and that's fantastic you always want that ability but what makes the clamp meter so much more utilitarian, especially in an RV when you seem like you're constantly trying to assess and evaluate loads that are being placed upon your batteries or even your 110 devices, the clamp meter has the ability to be clamped around one lead of a conduit and measure the current that's passing through this fork. Well, a lot of times, if you want to test a 12 volt current, you're in great shape because you can go right around one of those wires. Very seldom is a 12 volt uh, appliance or um, connection actually bonded together to the point where you can't separate one of those leads. The problem arises when you're trying to test a, uh, a 110 appliance because guess what almost always they're going to be bonded together right well if you don't realize it you cannot do that right a clamp meter the purpose of a clamp meter is you must go around one of the conductors whether it's positive or neutral or negative you've got to only be able to clamp one of them so I was thinking how am I going to do that well, here comes a little secret. And yeah, I'm sure there's somebody out there that's smarter than I am and has already figured this out. But I felt pretty happy I was able to do this. Um, and it works like a charm. And I'm going to give you some examples and show you how this works. But I'm going to give it away right now. So I went to, I think, Home Depot and I bought myself a pigtail. Right? Pigtail. It's an 18-inch pigtail. And what I did on that is I carefully, and I can't emphasize enough, carefully scored and stripped away the insulative housing, exposing the three conductors, and I cleaned it all up, sliced it down, pulled that off in about a six inch section, and then I sealed it up with silicone on each end just to kind of seal those things off and just make it that much neater. Totally not necessary. What does this do? Well, it allows you to put this 
little hack in between your power source and your appliance and guess what you can do now you can go, go right around that hot lead face in the right direction and now you can measure AC current it makes this package right here invaluable I tossed my standard multimeter because this baby here does everything this also has an NCV so it allows you to check the presence of voltage just the presence it's not going to measure how much it's going to measure the presence so if you wanted to go to a post at your RV site and just check to make sure it actually is hot you can do that it doesn't measure the voltage but most of the time you don't really care at this point you just want to see if that particular outlet is hot and that's pretty cool it just works just right up in here you don't have to stick it in or anything you just hold it a lot of people have seen little small little pen tools that do the same thing it's just built into this one and it works fantastic it's great a um, bunch of other features it's a full featured multimeter but um, that's really it you got your AC current your DC current and your near voltage sensor and you know, I tell you it is it is a cool tool highly recommended so let's go use it and I'll show you what I mean so I've got the clamp multimeter and I'm going to turn the selector to NCV all it's going to sense is the flow of energy so it's pretty simple on this box here we're going to look down here and I'm going to show you right up here you're going to see that these are actually switched off and if I hold the NCV probe up there notice it's not doing anything but watch what happens when I turn that 20 amp breaker on see there sets the alarm off letting me know that it's energized same thing with a 30 amp okay if these things are close together they're gonna bleed over but you'll notice that's not doing anything until I energize the breaker sometimes these more protected boxes like this GFI sometimes it doesn't pick it up okay sometimes you have to move it around but it is in fact telling me it's energized and if I turn that breaker off you'll notice now see it definitely works great especially for um, lines that you see all right if you want to know if that cord has energy going through it it's invaluable now comes the real magic the real value of this here clamp meter the clamp meter measures flow current amperage right it's so invaluable to be able to come out and check your batteries current flow at the batteries I'm not talking about up on the panel inside the coach I'm not talking about your alternator readout I'm not even talking about your inverter panel I want to know right here right at my battery bank how much energy is flowing in or out of these batteries whether the battery banks are unified or single battery banks or even a chassis battery the clamp meter just word of caution this one and most of them will have either a DC or an AC amperage selector you want to make sure you're on that I've been stung before where I've accidentally had it on the wrong one it won't hurt the meter and it won't hurt you it's just not going to show your readout and it'll give you a little bit of a panic there for a second but you've got the solid line with the dashed line underneath it that indicates that you're on a, a DC source positive and negative if it has the wavy line on it that is alternating current so you want to be in this case DC and it should in fact verify DC in the display I would recommend zeroing it out most of these meters will have a, a zero out or an auto zero function but that'll just basically drop it back to zero because a lot of times these things will pick up ambient um, you know micro amperage even if it's static electricity if you wave it around you'll notice I've got uh, 0.25 amps I can touch it it'll jump up a little bit it just allows you to zero it out and I do it right before I touch the uh, conductor double check your flow in this case it's going into the coach that way so once again here's where this meter really comes in handy notice the display is facing down yeah I could get under there and look at it 
but why bother? All I got to do, clamp it there, and look at that. It's dropping up and down, depending on what's going on inside. It's at, it's at 0.3, not bad. And you can set it back to zero. I can double check my negative. Should be obviously the same. It is 0.3. Now I have another one up here. Let's double check that one. Zero it out. And that one's sitting at 0.4 as well. So that's telling me I'm good. And, and the reason why I like that right now is I'm actually on shoreline power. Shoreline power, I shouldn't be drawing anything. In fact, I should be putting energy into these house batteries. So I'm sitting at 0.3, 3 tenths of a uh, amp, and I like that. You gotta admit, that's pretty cool because otherwise, I really don't know what's happening right at the battery level. So that was one of the biggest reasons that I bought this. The other one is I actually have a charger pigtail up here. And so on my charger, I can check to see how much energy is actually going in to those batteries right off of my charger. No guesswork involved, all right? How about we take a look at that? So what I'm referring to when I say a outboard charger is a lot of times I'll want to trickle charge or float charge my battery bank, not necessarily being hooked up to a 50 amp service. Now see, I have a Victron float charger, right? But when I connect the float charger to my batteries, and real simply, put that clamp meter around that lead, and I can measure right down to the tenth of an amp how much this charger is putting out right to that battery bank. It takes all the guesswork out of it. Okay, here comes another good use for the clamp meter, and I know that you guys have all wanted to test this appliance many times. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Yep, I'm talking about the dreaded hair curler. Never know how much these suckers are gonna take. Yeah, you can look on the back of those if you can read the fine print, but guess what? We're gonna show you how to do it the right way. Get your 110 plug, put it into my hack and pigtail here. Let's put this out of the way. Let's plug the curler in. Once again, make sure you've got it on amps for alternating current. Your load is going that way towards the hair curler. Make sure your arrow is pointing in that direction. Grab your hot and it's at zero. Let's turn this bad boy on. I think I know how to do it. Here we go. Point 0.75 amps. Not a heck of a lot, right? What's that? You, you want me to test that? Oh, okay. I knew you guys would ask, all right? Yeah, and don't tell me that you're not taking these with you camping, because I know you are. So, fine, I'll test it. Uh-huh, that's right. I know you guys are taking these with you when you're camping. You got to, otherwise you ain't camping. But you're thinking, oh, bad, that's a lot of juice. Well, let's find out right now, and that way you can tell your wife. Yeah, I'm sure it's your wife that's using these. So let's find out. Uh, you're going to hear a bit of noise. Here we go. Wow. 11 amps. 2.85. Oh boy, well there you go. So there you go, I hope you like that. A um, little bit of a tech tip for you. Once again, this is the Ideal, uh, got it at Lowe's. It's the model 61-747. It took about 90 bucks of my money. This is a pigtail. I think that was all whopping seven or eight bucks. Works great. Funny thing is, you notice how I didn't even have to use these for anything? Keep them around. You're gonna need it, whether you're testing little AA batteries or who knows what. You can even test circuits with it. But it comes with a nice carrying case. And this little gem has earned a permanent spot in my 
on the road toolbox. Hope you find this useful. Give me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. And most of all, give me some feedback down below. Tell me what else you want to see and we'll do our best. Thanks and safe travels.